scooter world, there's a vast variety of displacement categories to choose from, anything from 50 cc's up to 650 and even above that. Right here, cut in the middle of that pie is the uh, 300 cc range of scooters. We've got the uh, Kimco Downtown 300i, the Sim Citycom 300i, the Vespa GTS 300, the uh, Piaggio BV350, and then the Honda Forza ranging in displacements from about 263 all the way up to 330 cc on the Piaggio BV350. So we've brought along some familiar characters. We got Evans and we got John and you might even know Ty at this point. And then uh, the newbie to the fold, if you will, is uh, Scott here. So I guess we'll start with just overall, you know, city impressions. Evans, what did you think about, I guess, all of these when it comes to city riding? I got to admit, it, I've spent more time on the Forza, so maybe I've adapted my riding style to it a bit, but I, I found that to work the best for me in the city. Um, the power delivery is is just really, it's, it's just like a rheostat. It doesn't go anywhere quickly, but I just roll it on and eventually I get to the speed I want to. The Vespa, I thought, was the best handling, the snappiest around town. It did what I wanted to do when I, when I wanted it to do it. Um, the Piaggio, uh, it felt the most different to me. Uh, it was it steered the slowest, which doesn't mean I couldn't get it to do what I wanted it to do, but it just it just didn't feel as uh, responsive. It wasn't ready to you know, snap to when I asked it to. It's funny earlier today, you know, Ty, we were talking about you were kind of concerned about how these would do on the freeway, and they're all freeway legal. And of course, we get on the freeway and we get here, and you were that that fear you had was gone. How Absolutely. Do you, what do you think about that? You know, coming down, like you said, I thought there, we'd have issues keeping up with traffic, especially at 80, 85 miles an hour in Southern California traffic. But I rode the, uh, the downtown uh, on the way down here, and it actually was smoother than some of the 300 motorcycles we were riding just last week. So it was able to keep up with traffic fine. It, it was smooth. Uh, the, you know, there wasn't a whole lot up top past 80 miles an hour, but I had no problems, or we had no problems slicing right through traffic, uh, and the, the bike itself felt really, really stable, and I had no problems moving. Now I did take the Forza uh, on the freeway for a short uh, stint, and I found that uh, it got a little buzzy. It felt pretty solid, but it got a little buzzy. John, you've uh, spent a little bit of time with these too, getting on the freeway, coming here. What would you think of uh, the Italians? Uh, Scott, Scott, Scott and me came up PCH this morning. We were going 70 for a while, I think, and uh, they didn't, didn't have any problem with the, with the Italians. The, 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 the Piaggio here is like the, it's based upon their police, their police version that the New York Police Department uses. It's got, it's got the biggest wheels here, I think, and it's got the biggest engine, so it, it, it might have the most top speed, and the, the bigger wheels give, give it a little bit more, a little bit more stability. The, the Vespa, I think, has got the smallest wheels, and it, 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 it makes it makes really it makes pretty good power too. It'll it'll zip along at, at probably 85 or 90, and it doesn't quite feel feel as stable as the bigger wheeled ones do. But um, it's it's got a bunch of new parts on it. The Piaggio guy was telling me, and uh, you know it's a beautiful, it's a classic Italian thing. And if you're just going around town, it's it's hard to beat that thing. You know, any of the scooters are fantastic for you know just get, getting around town, zipping to the store. To get stuff you need, they're all so so. They're all so so fun for the kind of inner city riding we were doing all day today, and they actually go go pretty quick too if you spring for a bigger one, huh? We were we were talking about handling, um, Scott. I know the two of us were talking about how these handle. Uh, share your thoughts about some of the handling characteristics you noticed on these. Well, definitely with the Vespa, uh, I think the handling is going to be the snappiest, the most responsive. Um, there's a lot to be said for having the ability to maneuver quickly in traffic, especially downtown. The Kimco was a little bit light in the front end. Um, it seemed to still have the response you needed, but if you got it up to speed uh, and you needed to get around traffic, there was a little bit to be compensated for when it came to maneuvering. But overall, they all handled great and um, all will get you out of a spot if you're getting a jam, especially downtown. Yeah, I mean, of course, we talk about handling. We're talking about scooters here. We're not talking about sport bike type, even motorcycle type handling. We got to, you know, define what we mean by handling here. Um, but yeah, I noticed the Forza, the Sim, and the Kimco all have 
windscreens. The Forza is kind of a fly screen, if you will. So you'll enjoy the wind protection if you do a lot of freeway miles or just a lot of high speed uh, commuting. Sim, Vespa, and Piaggio all have little grocery bag hooks. Forza does not. It's not really a step through design. Um, but all of them can fit a full size helmet underneath the uh, seat if you position it correctly and if you have a small enough helmet. Kind of a caveat in that little scenario there. But yeah, under seat storage, there's a lot to be provided. The Vespa here has ABS, traction control. There's even the uh, Vespa multimedia management system. You can put up an app on your phone, plop it up on the uh, dash here of the Vespa, and you can see all these displays on your phone about what the bike is doing. It's a pretty trick display. Uh, there's a USB port on the Vespa. Of course, the Vespa also costs the most. It starts at $65.99, whereas uh, the Forza is $55.99. You can add ABS for $500. The Kimco is also $55.99, so putting the Kimco and the Honda exactly at the same price, which is an interesting perspective. Uh, the Piaggio is $58.99, and then the Sim comes in as the value leader at $48.99. So with that said, with the Sim as the cheapest bike here, does it suddenly gain any sort of points with, with you guys? I think with it being a value price bike, um, it makes me surprised at the fit and finish. It seems to be pretty well appointed for something being the least expensive bike here. Um, I don't think it changes my overall impression of, of the scooter, but um, it definitely earns it some um, some bonuses. I think the Sim, we kind of learned with a T250 last week, it's a pretty pretty nicely turned out. It's got pretty good quality components on it. And the, the, the thing actually goes pretty, pretty good too. Still, it's not that beautiful though. So I'm, I'd kind of have to go, if, if you live in a congested city where you need something like that, if you have a place to park it inside, I'm gonna go with the Honda or the, or the Vespa. If it has to sit on the street, I'll go take the Sim. <laughs> yeah. The Honda seems to be the one that looks most like a sport bike right now, right? Kind of, yeah, yeah. It's a very, it's a very well, sporty, definitely feels sporty more sport looking bike. thing. Yeah, it does. It feels more like a like a motorcycle. It's got a little more heft to it, a little more weight to it. The it just feels a little, it's a little floppy to me. The front end's a little kind of light. The engine's a little gruff. You can, when you look at the price tag, you can see where the where the why it should be last place as far as price bottom bottom price. And I think it's uh, commensurate with the, with the performance of the, the vehicle. That being said, there was a lot of stop and go traffic that we went through in downtown Long Beach. Uh, truck maneuverability, people pulling out in front of us, the standard deal you typically have in a big city. And when we're all riding it, I think we're able to maneuver around quite easily. But I think the Vespa is the most fun. Out of all of these bikes, when I got on the Vespa, I, I just immediately started smiling. The Vespa has the shortest wheelbase, which makes it, you know, want to turn really quickly. It's really responsive. And you feel what the front end is doing, which is not something you can normally say with a scooter. Most scooters have really wishy-washy front ends that kind of don't communicate very well. This Vespa, you can tell, is made in Italy because, you know, all the sport bike heritage there. You can feel the front end. It's really responsive and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to ride. So the Vespa is a really fun scooter to ride, really short wheelbase, really responsive, but is it $65.99 worth of fun? Well, that's something you're gonna have to go to Mosacle.com to find out.